karate actually came from Okinawa, from China to Okinawa and developed in Okinawa and then it went to Japan in the, the late 1920s and early 1930s and um, it had a resurgence after World War II and um, it, it has changed uh, considerably out of all proportion to what it was before. Karate today has exploded since it came to the West and it really came to the West in the, the 1950s. You can't expect to go into a real fight in self-defense and never get hit. That just only happens in movies. If you're going to get hit, you may get hit very hard, and you're going to learn how to take that because you have to win. If you're going to fight, you have to win. You can't afford to lose because it's not a game. It was quite small for my age and um, I wanted to learn how to fight and I happened to see a book in the library and there was a book on Jiu Jitsu and it featured the Japanese masters um, teaching or practicing Jiu Jitsu and uh, it seemed to be very interesting and that got my, my interest started and I started to practice um, these locks, holds and strikes. I first heard about karate from uh, newspaper reports and um, I found a book uh, which um, I got for my Christmas in uh, 1960 and that um, started my interest. Oh, I just felt this was something that I really wanted to do and I spent the first two years trying to learn from, from the book, or b books because I might get other books. And I then made a contact with a Frenchman by the name of Henri Play in Paris and, uh, in 1963 and I wrote to him asking permission to come and train at his dojo. He, first of all, um, said no. He said to me that he had had some people came from England, he said about 12 of them, and they, they, they left. They couldn't handle the training, it was too tough. So I wrote back to him and said to him, well look, I'd been a Royal Marines commander and I, I'd I only just left the year before. I said, I don't believe that anything he was gonna do in the dojo was as tough as the commando course. And of course, that was a challenge, and he said, okay, come. So I went, and um, he's right, uh, the training was very, very tough, but it was nothing tougher than I had done before. There was katas, different basic techniques and things to learn. And so with him being my first instructor, he obviously had a considerable in influence on, on what was to come later. Kobe and Osaka are basically uh, twin cities in a way. Kobe is the port city, Osaka was the big industrial city. And so I used the name Kobe Osaka. Contact was very hard. Uh, when I say contact, I mean contact with the fists and the feet. We didn't wear any protection. There was no protection. This had all been developed in later years, you know, to avoid people getting injuries. But um, it was quite often for people to get noses broken, lips split, eyes split, to get the faces stitched, to get ribs broken. Um, contact was very hard. Training was very, very hard. It was a bit military. Only the dedicated would stick it. At that time, um, I worked for the Scottish Daily Express and the, the Evening Citizen. In 1967, I gave up my job uh, with the newspapers to go to Japan. It was at that time that I made up my mind that um, I wanted to teach karate professionally. Obviously, I think when you're younger, the, the big achievement, of course, is getting your black belt um, and so on. And then, of course, once I realised that if I train hard enough and with the proper training, I could do good at competition. Um, he, he started training when he was six, um, and that would be in around about 1969 that he started karate. So he'd been there a long time. He's trained in Japan. He has a depth of knowledge that many people don't have. We have to bear in mind that many 
instructors, not all, but there are many instructors who have never trained with a Japanese instructor, never been to Japan, learned everything they know from in a sports centre, and many of them train twice a week. From an early years, maybe, I don't know, maybe around about sort of 12, 13 years, what I wanted to do was basically follow in my father's footsteps by teaching karate, that's what I wanted to do, was teach. Um, I did competition on and off, as in from I was 12 or 13 years old, and it wasn't until I got really to 1985, when I was 22, that I won the first British Karate Championship, and I really started to think, right, I could go somewhere here, and therefore um, the training for competition took precedence, and because of who my father was, Nowadays, of course, um, we have the majority of people doing karate, 70% more or less throughout the world, are kids under the age of 16 and some of them now as young as age 4 and 5. Now I would say it's, it's kind of, well, this day and age it's a wee bit more relaxed as in the training, uh, maybe slightly more focused on competition. The things that we did then, you would not be allowed to do today. I mean, the, the injuries that were received and the real fights that we had, the whole nature was totally changed. You wouldn't recognise it. I'm very um, happy with my life. I've had a great life and I believe that I was blessed in the way that I was able to make a living from my hobby. I really like teaching people. I enjoy giving the benefit of my experience. And I know that in some cases that it has served people very well when they have been attacked and when they have faced dire circumstances. It's my hope, of course, that my son Stephen and um, will be able to carry it on and that it will go on after me, after I, after I have gone, um, but um, only time will tell. As we said, karate has changed dramatically, it's completely different from what it was before. I still get emails and letters today from people who trained with me 40, 50 years ago, thanking us for and me for, for what he learned in the club and one, more than one actually said that what he'd learned in Kobe Osaka had saved his life.